Welcome back to this CBS News Minnesota special as we remember the 35W bridge collapse 15 years later. One year after it happened, the city honored the lives of those who were killed. Our Esme Murphy reported as the community tried to heal. On a day as brilliantly clear as that day one year ago, a solemn commemoration honored the victims and the heroes who saved so many others. Led by the governor, the first lady, the mayor, and Senator Amy Klobuchar, hundreds walked from a service at Gold Medal Park to the Stone Arch Bridge. In view of the new bridge still under construction, but the span now complete, white doves were released as the names of the victims were read. Peter Hausman, Patrick Holmes. In a riverboat below, the families of the victims tossed wreaths into the churning water. And at the moment the bridge fell, an American flag was unfurled on the new span. America, America. Among the hundreds who came to the earlier service, Andrea Whitaker. She planned to take the bridge that day at that very time, but her father warned her not to because of the construction. I can tell you exactly where he was sitting and, you know, exactly what he said and everything just because it, you know, kept reflashing in my mind. The Coulter family did take the bridge that day. They were on it when it fell. Paula spent months in the hospital. Her husband Brad and their two daughters were also seriously hurt. Uh, the day goes by where we don't think about it. For the Coulters, it was their first time back. I think for closure, or for, for closure of that particular part of it, because it's not done, we're not done with it. It's not, it's, it's gonna be a long time before it's not thought of every day a lot, because we still have a lot of, um, adjustments, things that we need to do to get better. On a day meant to remember and move forward, at one point a solitary bald eagle soared and circled the site that one year ago brought such chaos and such heroism. This is what remains at the collapsed 35W bridge where it's been for nearly a year. We will retain possession of that material that's stored at the Bohemian Flats until the NTSB report is out and finalized. Then MnDOT will move it and keep it for seven years. It's just one thing we wondered about the bridge. Another puzzling drivers, the bridge is designed with five lanes each direction, but only three lanes greet motorists on the other end. What is the purpose of the five lanes? One of those five lanes is what we call an auxiliary lane. Meant for longer, safer entrances and exits. But MnDOT admits bottlenecks will occur at times. Not good. To ease congestion after the bridge collapse, extra lanes were added to I-94 and elsewhere. Will they stay? All of those changes that we made last September will be evaluated for their performance to date. In other words, they don't know yet. The bridge contractor gets $20 million extra to finish the bridge early. Will the workers get a bonus check? Yeah, I mean, they're the ones doing it. So yeah, for sure it should be shared. Nope, they get nothing. Flatiron Construction says most of the bonus is already spent on overtime wages and equipment. MnDOT is considering letting the public walk over the bridge to take a closer look before it opens to traffic. When it does... First person to drive over the bridge. You know, I actually think the um, families of the people who died. Just over a year after it happened, a new bridge opened in the same spot for drivers crossing the Mississippi River. Planning, design, and construction for the 35W St. Anthony Falls Bridge was completed in September 2008. It was finished three months ahead of schedule. Minnesotans crossed the bridge the moment it opened during rush hour traffic at 5 a.m. Following an investigation, federal safety investigators determined a design flaw was to blame for the collapse. But the tragedy sparked concern about the nation's failing infrastructure. Our Caroline Cummings reports on what's changed in the year since the disaster to ensure safety. The stunning images of a bridge carrying Minnesotans during rush hour crumbling into the Mississippi River are seared into memory. A state investigative report after the tragedy summed it up like this. Lives were shattered by the collapse of the I-35W bridge. So too was confidence in the safety of Minnesota's bridges. 
15 years later, a bridge rebuilt and policy changed. Can Minnesotans feel confident in the safety of the state's bridges today? Yes, absolutely. That's our job number one. A bipartisan committee at the Minnesota legislature convened and it contracted with a firm to do an investigation. The findings put the Minnesota Department of Transportation under heavy scrutiny. Ed Ludkin, the state bridge engineer at the agency, worked on figuring out what happened for months after the collapse, working on the scene nearly every day. Protocol, he says, has improved. Looking at the bridge inspection program, we have better quality control, better quality assurance. We've improved training. We've improved resources for people. We're making sure that every bridge gets inspected every two years and poor bridges gets inspected every year. The Minnesota legislature raised the gas tax in 2008 to boost transportation funding, the first increase like it in 20 years. That supported the bridge improvement program, which directed MnDOT to prioritize deteriorating bridges with the greatest need for fixing. 172 targeted then, all either repaired or replaced by the time the program sunset in 2018. Ludkin says the state has cut down on the number of bridges in poor condition by two thirds since 2007. Last 15 years, we've improved tremendously in our bridge inspection program. Still, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave Minnesota a C grade for bridges in its infrastructure report card this year. 874 bridges identified as in poor condition. Minnesota is set to get billions of dollars from the federal infrastructure law, including 300 million in new money for bridges alone over five years. Experts welcome on this investment, but say it still falls short of the needs in future years. Well, it's only part of the funding picture and story, and so we have to use that and leverage that. In Minneapolis, Caroline Cummings, WCCO 4 News. There are 20,000 bridges in the state, and MnDOT is responsible for the inspection of all of them. It has been 15 years since the bridge collapse took the lives of 13 people. We'll continue to remember those victims and the entire Twin Cities community that was impacted. Thanks for being here for this CBS News Minnesota special. Have a good evening.